Well, thank you for a very stimulating presentation. Um, ahora voy a presentar, eh, unos datos. Now I'm going to present some data for Spain. I just want to remind you that this uh, survey combines the results of pupil students in performance tests, uh, PISA performance tests, with questionnaires that were done simultaneously for students, for families and teachers. And in the Spain presentation also, apart from saying some of the consequences that these results have in pupils age uh, 15, later on in their professional trajectory, in their career, or in their student career at university. I'm going to also include some data that we've uh, looked at, at the, in the ministry, such as uh, to do with uh, vocational training and choice when choosing university. And what we see when we compare Spain with um, the OECD uh, in reading, you can see that girls have uh, significantly higher uh, points, marks than uh, the, the boys. Uh, but in Spain, as you'll see, uh, the results are lower than the average OEC OECD. However, in maths, it is the boys who get uh, higher results, and in sciences you cannot see any significant uh, differences between girls and boys. And when we see the evolution over years, what we can observe is that when there is a difference of gender, such as, such for example, in mathematics and reading, unfortunately, the gap increases. In the case of reading, the, the gap has increased significantly because boys have worsened their performance, and in maths, also, the gap has increased significantly, this time because the girls have uh, worsened their performance. And in the case where the, either boys or girls have a worse performance, that uh, performance has gotten worse over time. This has increased the gap, therefore, between boys and girls. However, with sciences where there isn't a gap, the evolution has been similar for both girls and boys there. And with regards to the percentage of boys and girls who, that we have in the lower levels, as in the higher levels of PISA, PISA goes from 1 to 5, and 1, 2 uh, are the lower levels, and, up, and 5, 6 are the higher levels. And there we can see that there are more boys in the lower levels of PISA in reading and a negative evolution. Uh, and in the higher levels, we have more girls in the higher levels, and there the evolution is positive in Spain, uh, both for girls and boys. And uh, when we look at the same results for maths, in the lower levels, we have more girls than boys in the lower levels, uh, lower level. And then we, we go to the higher performance levels in maths. So there we can say that more boys than girls have higher levels without there being any significant changes over time. Uh, and when we see the same analysis for sciences where we, we haven't seen significant differences between boys and girls in previous slides, there we see again the difference, the same, that we have similar proportions of boys and girls in the lower levels and also with a similar evolution, and we have uh, a proportion which is slightly higher of boys in the higher levels, but there isn't any significant change with the evolution over time, progression over time. And when we look at the difference between boys and girls in problem solving, we, we can see that there aren't any significant differences between boys and girls, but here, and this is one of the PISA aspects where our students have worse performance compared to the average OCDE, OECD because we, as we said in other occasions when we presented the results of uh, problem solving, this was uh, uh, an area which wasn't concentrated on enough in the uh, educational methodology, but there aren't any significant differences nevertheless between boys and girls, and therefore the gender gap in Spain has increased between 2003 to 2012 in maths as well as in reading in, in both cases because the, the gender uh, that has a worse performance in both of these has worsened their performance over time and therefore we are in the worst um, quadrant and where there is a gap and this 
gap has uh, increased and degenerated over time significantly. And with regards to prospects, expectations that boys and girls have, and this is part of the questionnaire, and therefore this has a subjective element to it. With regards to the labor expectations, the labor status to which girls aspire is higher than the boys because they aspire more, more to more and they have a clearer idea about what they want to what they aspire to develop as a profession and surprisingly in spite of the data that we will see later the boys and girls show an interest in uh, sciences in similar proportions and are also surprisingly higher than the average OECD although the performance is lower than the OECD average and with regards to the proportion of girls that incline are inclined for health sciences uh, as we saw before it is always significantly higher than for boys whilst it is the boys that, that prefer uh, with a big difference uh, to have uh, professional options which have to do with engineering and IT and with regards to the data that we've analyzed about um, university training university uh, these are uh, uh, university uh, people who have uh, registered and there's a higher proportion of women than men uh, registered at universities uh, and however the options that they choose are quite different uh, once they're in social sciences and uh, legal and social sciences there's a higher proportion of women than men however and associated to the expectations that we've just looked at, there's a higher proportion of men than women that choose careers in engineering and architecture and in arts and humanities it is uh, higher, there's only a slightly higher proportion of women and in health sciences it, the proportion of women there is significantly higher and in sciences uh, generally that is chosen by very few men or women and it is a proportion that is uh, lowering and this is a matter of great concern as was said by the previous speaker and a lot of the work that can be offered in the future have to do with the area of science and we've had a, a, a significant decrease in, in the number of students overall to choose uh, this particular option but there aren't particular differences between men and women and with regards to the evolution of the proportion of, of women university students who are for different types of studies and we can see that there's a higher proportion of women that choose social and legal sciences compared to any other field but it has gone down slightly whilst the proportion of women that choose health sciences has increased slightly and the other areas of knowledge the proportion is low and it is main, it is stays stable and it is particularly low in sciences and now with regard compared with other countries with regards to uh, stem stm sciences mathematics technology and which uh, is for societies in innovation there's a higher proportion of uh, job offers in the market and there spain is below the uh, european union uh, in average in uh, these uh, areas now, with regards to the choices made by men and women in vocational training in the higher uh, or upper and middle uh, vocational training, the higher part of the uh, graph, you can see the middle grade uh, vocational training and, and there at the end of the graph you can see that there is a greater proportion of men than women that are uh, matriculated 65% uh, compared to 44% but there is a difference there whilst uh, there is virtually no difference in the proportion of men and women in the lower graph uh, which who enroll in higher uh, grade uh, vocational training however in middle uh, and in higher grade there is a big difference in the type of uh, qualifications uh, that the students uh, enroll for and we have a descending order of 
for preference for women, so those that are on the left of the graph are the, are the subjects that women choose uh, more than men, and there there's a predominance once more. Everything that has to do with uh, health sciences, uh, personal image, um, textiles, and dressmaking, I bet we, we look for middle or higher uh, to grade, we can see that what men choose as a priority have to do with electricity, uh, motor cars, or, and uh, totally different subjects and fields. With regards to the evolution of enrollment into vocational train training, there's been a significant increase in recent years over the number of students that have enrolled particularly in vocational training of uh, middle grade. And here we can see that there's been an increase, as I said before, there's a greater proportion of men that have enrolled in middle grade uh, vocational training than women. And this is growing in both, but it is growing more, but the, the number of men enrolled is growing more. And in higher grade enrollment also, that is growing significantly, but there's not, there there's not so much difference between men and women. With regards to the share of students, of new uh, uh, students in uh, mid-grade vocational training, they're in the younger age groups uh, where there is a larger proportion of students that join mid-grade vocational training, particularly 17, 18-year-olds. There, with less uh, frequency, also 19 year olds, there's a higher proportion there of men than women. However, if we continue right up until the end of the graph, uh, and there, the cohorts of a greater age, there you can see that after age 25 or 30 or 48 years of age, which are the last the columns, there's a greater proportion of women that uh, join uh, vocational training in order to recycle and get new titles and to get uh, 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 a proper education uh, than the number of men that do it at that uh, age. And here we have the same for vocational uh, training of a higher grade and you can see a similar uh, phenomenon at the ages, the younger ages where the, most of the students enroll there, there you can see uh, at, that it is slightly more for men than women at age 19. Uh, but when you go to uh, higher age groups, then there is a higher uh, percentage or proportion of women that join vocational training at higher ages. With regards to attitudes to study, you can see that in Spain there's a very high um, re uh, repetition rate, uh, but this is higher among the boys than the girls, substantially greater uh, of uh, re repeat students with regards to reading for pleasure or leisure. Girl girls do read more for pleasure than boys. And with regards to what factors may contribute to reducing this gender gap in education, on the one hand, there is a problem of motivation, and uh, the boys always show more interest for mathematics, and, and I remind you that that is the area where they have better results, and so therefore in questionnaires, to questions, uh, um, interested in things, or I, uh, I study maths because I like it, or I do things that uh, their boys uh, respond much more positively. However, girls show much more anxiety with regards to mathematics. They see it as something that is difficult, that concerns them, that worries them, and the time. And uh, the, for example, that I, do, do I worry when I get bad marks in maths, or do I feel able uh, when I have to face a problem in math? And the negative perception in, m towards maths also had to do with, to in my uh, class, I understand even, even the most uh, difficult things, and there the boys answer most po more positively than the girls. And when we go to questions, we have to do more to, to do with the marks. For example, I get better marks in maths, then the girls and the boys are more similar. So in other words, the perception uh, that the girls have uh, with regards to their performances, maths is worse and how difficult they perceive it to be as a field of knowledge than the actual results that they obtain afterwards. And so the same happens with regards to self-sufficiency uh, 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 
he, this, uh, this is a question where the consumption of petrol in a car where the girls have worse results. I don't know whether it has to do with cars and petrol or maths because really it is striking that it is the only question where the girls really have worse results. Uh, and since I'm a girl, well, I, I've come to the conclusion that it has to do with the, with the fact that the question uh, has to do with a car because then afterwards to resolve an equation or do graphs or calculate the price of a television set, there, there the girls have the same performance as the boys in those kinds of questions. Now, to compare the performance between maths and the gender gap here, what we have done is an analysis, a subsequent analysis, to the one that was presented by uh, Mr. Stefan Kapferer, and there we've compared the countries where the students have a better performance in maths, which includes Shanghai, China, Netherlands, Finland, Canada, etc., with the countries of the extreme opposite, where uh, countries uh, where the students have the worst uh, maths uh, results. Spain is not in this graph, and so don't worry, so, because our intention was not to situate Spain on this particular graph, but to get to the conclusion that where the countries where students have a good performance, that uh, educational system is also able to overcome any gap of gender or of any type. So what characterizes a good educational model is that not only it manages to get to improve the student performance, but it allows them to go overcome any expectations and therefore to overcome any bad gap of gender or whatever type which st arises from uh, attitudes which uh, the children may perceive in society or in their families and that they may have an influence in the negative results that they have. And however, obviously, in the countries with a bad uh, performance, magnify those gaps. So a good educational model gets uh, good results for all students, all pupils, and it gets all students to improve. And with regards now to the role of teachers in the, in the gender gap here, essentially what we can see is something that is very general. Those teachers that are more demanding with students and that demand a, a greater level of autonomy from them get the girls to have a better uh, math, uh, result in mathematics. And it's just by demanding more and asking more for more independence or autonomy, you get better results in girls in those fields which apparently uh, seem more difficult to them. And with regards to the impact of families, now to go a little bit further to go a bit further than the analysis the analyses that have been presented here, there's a result which is quite surprising and positive, and that is that when mothers work the mothers have a positive impact on the performance of their boys, uh, but also particularly on the performance of their girls. We don't know why. We don't know if they are more demanding. We don't know because of the if it is because of the model that they raise. We don't know because of, if it is because of they try to convey to their daughters the confidence that they can also have a good performance or good result in math. But really, it has a big impact, which is even greater if the the mother has a university degree, and so with the PISA results therefore show a greater global performance in girls in reading and the boys in maths and there there's a gender gap but that is an in inverse uh, inverse gender gap and age 15 60% of the pupils of low performance in the three PISA uh, skills are boys and 40% girls and that means that boys are more uh, frequently lagging behind than the girls the reading uh, the girls are better than boys in all countries. They read more for leisure, but in maths they are less uh, confident in, in themselves and this gives them a worse results. And the gap in gender in Spain has a tendency to get bigger in recent years. Girls in general are better adapted to the educational system than the boys and girls have greater uh, professional aspirations than the boys and they in are inclined towards health uh, and boys more for engineering and IT and so then that it's necessary to encourage uh, um, uh, study and improvement in confidence and uh, uh, and here all society, not only the teachers, but all society and families, employers, and uh, are, everyone has to uh, contribute to uh, overcome this gap which can cause a lot of harm professionally afterwards. And now we have an occasion uh, to exchange questions from the floor.